My name is Bo Beatty. Randy Newberg is a good friend of mine. Hopefully I'm a good friend of his. I'm also known as uh, the llama guy. I'm a dad. I'm a husband, a business owner. My wife and I own Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas. And we are based out of Idaho Falls, Idaho. You know, I'm not a professional hunter. I'm a blue collar guy. Work a lot with my hands. We run a, our llama ranch. We rent llamas out. We do guided trips in the summer, fishing expeditions, peak bagging. That's our life, you know, is raising our family and working on a ranch. We are headed over to Wyoming. Um, this is the first elk tag that I've ever drawn. And so I'm pretty excited. All the hunts I've ever done are over-the-counter hunts, public land, general season type hunts. So being able to hunt a draw tag is new experience for me. It's kind of fun. There's good quality mature bulls over there, but uh, who knows what we'll find. We have lots of weather, lots of variables. The unit is a complex unit. We can only hunt one side of the river. Very, very steep country. There's some burns. There's lots of open country. And typically I would have gouted it been there in person a couple times at least, but this season has just been not ideal. So Bo was diagnosed with cancer in March. When I found out I was diagnosed with cancer, I was going to turn this uh, tag in because I just thought there's no way that I'll be able to go. And then I thought, you know, it's just something nice to hold on to. So I kind of used it as a motivation to do everything I could to get healthy, work on um, our business, take care of my family. Well, it was a huge inspiration and motivation for me to be able to just do everything that I could in my power just to try to be able to be here. Cancer really forces you to figure out your priorities. So he has spent a ton of time at home and not out in the wilderness. At this time of the year, I usually have, you know, maybe 60 to 70 days in the backcountry. And now I've had zero. I haven't been in the backcountry one day this entire year. Just about uh, four weeks ago, at the beginning of September, I was uh, given the news that I was cancer free. It has been a whirlwind since then. We have had so much going on, we've been so busy, and Bo hasn't had any time to scout or even think about hunting. So I'm a little bit nervous, I'm very excited, and I get to go in the backcountry with an elk tag in my pocket. I'm excited, I'm not gonna let anything hold me back. I have no expectations, except for the fact that if there's elk in there, I'm bound to determine that I'm gonna find them. I'm gonna do whatever I can find them, use every tactic, skill that I've learned, used, read about to find some elk. So if they're there, I'm going to find them. Jackson, you got to go to work, bud. Come on. Yeah, I went out to the pasture, selected my favorite six llamas and said, you guys are coming with me. We hooked up to the truck, put the stock rack in the back of the pickup truck, loaded up all the llamas, and then say goodbye to my wife and son. My little boy, you know, he finally, he understands when dad is leaving. We tried like heck to get there. Oh crap, that's not good. We had three routes, and two of the routes we tried, one got closed you know, a couple hours before we got there, and one got closed moments before we got there, so we had to turn around. 
you know, a seven hour trip turned into a 10 hour trip. And so we finally found a route. We had to go all the way around to a totally different town. And we were 45 minutes away from our campsite in our unit and the fog rolled in and it got super, super um, dangerous to not drive. The snow was rolling in. And I was like, you know what? We're just not gonna risk it. It's uh, 11 o'clock at night. We're just gonna pull over and then we're just gonna camp in the trailer. <laughs> we're gonna be cozy, buddy. Well, good morning. Looks like it cleared up. We're in the morning of day two. Uh, hunt opened this morning, or it's gonna open this morning in about three hours. So we're gonna boogie on up to our intended campsite. Hopefully we can quickly set up camp and start glassing a little bit from there, and then we'll make a game plan. So we got a big pass to drive up and over, and hopefully it's all well. get to the bottom we see a camp where we want to camp we're like oh let's pray there's no one in the other spot so I swing all the way around to the right sure enough the spots ours for the keeping so good boy. you want to come out you got to come to the edge the weather forecast was showing tons and tons of snow that we were going to show up to camp and there's going to be 10 to 15 inches and we got there they were just a skiff. That was a you know, stress off of our backs. We're gonna get our llamas out so they can start eating the grass, which the grass is beautiful. Nice and tall, still had a lot of green to it. Got the tent set up, got some firewood, put all our gear in there, and then we started glassing just a few minutes really after daylight. I really want there to be elk <laughs> on that mountain. <laughs> And then the rest of our day was spent with the goal in mind that, that we were going to discover the unit. We'd never been there before, we'd never scouted it before, basically purely off of Onyx maps, Topo maps, and Google Earth had we kind of broke down the unit and decided where we were going to go, where we were going to look, and that's what we did. Uh, that morning we didn't find any animals. We really thought the elk were going to be high initially, but I had the feeling when I when we got up to 10,000 plus feet, I was like, you know, it just doesn't feel like there's going to be elk this high. I think they're going to be pushed down lower. And there wasn't a lot of protection, there wasn't a lot of cover. There was deep timber, but it was too rocky, and I thought this just doesn't feel like good habitat. So after we checked the northern part of the unit and the upper part of the unit, we decided that we'd kind of swing down and back around and glass closer to camp. And when we did, we turned up elk. Dude, we found out. Yeah. I kid you not, they're right on the river bank. Yes, we found some sign. Now I found some real ghosts. They're just sitting there bedded right on the river bank. This is so cool. And boy, was it a joyous moment. It was so great to see elk on opening day. This is amazing. We're close to camp. We got a cow elk that's crossing the river. We got scenery. We've got beavers eating on trees, a beautiful river bottom. We've got big, huge mountain faces, and the fog is coming in and coming out, and coming in and coming out. And so we're trying to glass these upper benches, and so we're not getting a good opportunity to glass. And all of a sudden on the bottom, start coming more elk. And I'm thinking, it's October 1st. There's gotta be a bull in here. Where is he at? Even a spike or something. Not one, eight cows, no spikes, no bulls, no bugles, and then, we finally got a break up in the fog up in the upper benches. And as we're glassing up there, all of a sudden we start seeing some cows. I'm like, yes, yes, elk. And we're watching the elk. We're thinking, man, you gotta go down the river, across the river, and then you have to climb all the way up to get to those elk and you have to swing around the bench. I'm like, we don't have enough time tonight. Let's just watch and glass. Ended up being quite a few elk. 
roughly about 20, 25 cows, a couple spikes, a small bull, and then a pretty good bull. And he starts pushing the cows around and bugling. We can't hear him, but we can see him bugling. And he doesn't ever really turn for very long to give us a good look. So dark fell upon us. We went back to camp, took care of the llamas again, made sure they had everything they needed, food and water, moved them a little bit. Started off that wood burning stove and uh, shared some stories, excitement about the day. Had some nice meals. A friend of ours made us some uh, prepackaged vacuum sealed meals and fell asleep with very few miles on our boots, tons of miles on the road and lots of glass time. <laughs> Some more elk milling around down there. Looks like they're just some more, three more cows. <laughs> we only ever saw two cows and those spikes all the first part of the morning. Um, we went back to camp, we regrouped, decided, you know, let's get all of our supplies ready. And then we went into town, we refueled up, and we checked a few more vantage points throughout the day. And with not very much luck, we did see one elk that was on a ledge, a spike. And then we thought there's one section of the unit for, way far south that we haven't looked at. Why don't we go all the way down there and we'll kind of work our way to the midpoint where our camp is. This area is nine and a half miles to get into. We're glassing it two miles away the bullet flies. And there's 30 elk over there, 30 to 35 elk with two bulls, and one of them is huge. Nine and a half miles to get there, and it's right above private. <laughs> Come on, man. Can't you make it any easier on us? And I'm thinking, this is great, we have elk to hunt. After we'd kind of spotted those elk further south, we moved our way back to the midpoint of the unit where our camp was, and we walked out to our ledge on the river break there, and the fog was kind of breaking up a little. We're gonna go back to camp, make a strategy for tomorrow. We did find one bull way south. We'll have to relocate camp, and then we're gonna to have to go about nine miles in to get over there. So it's not very far the way the bullet flies, but man, it's a long ways away to get in there because we have to go around a river, a ton of country. But I think we're gonna probably make that our plan. We'll tell you when we wake up in the morning, see how we're feeling. So it feels good to be in the elk woods. We woke up the next morning and the weather was supposed to be beautiful and clear, and it was. It was a really, really nice day. And all of a sudden we see a whopper of a bull come out of the timber, bugling at the cows, and we're like, holy smoke, that is a nice bull. I'm pretty anxious. Uh, it's gonna take three quarters, half a day to three quarters a day to get over there and get set up. And with the sun shining, I want to take advantage of the good road. So I think we're going to pack up camp, head over there as quick as we can, see what we can make happen. We're gonna give this all that we have. And I remember praying and thinking, we're just gonna need a little bit of luck to have this go our way.
Ahead of us is 10 miles, just shy of 10 miles, and uh, 2,800 feet of elevation. It's noon, and I'm not for sure how long it's going to take us. We have lots of climbing to do, so we're going to get on the road. We got all six llamas uh, put up. Here we go. We got, we got a long road to get to to get to where the elk are. Hopefully, just get there tonight, set up camp, and get bear safe, and go from there. And so we had to bring all of our preparations to stay for three to four days up there. And the llamas, man, they just powered through. Without them, there's been no way that we could have done it. They are just unfazed, and they're all loaded up 70 to 90 pounds a piece. We just got to camp, our spike camp. It took us a little faster than we thought to get here. So we did pretty good. We just got all the packs off, all the saddles off, all the llamas. Whew, I'm beat to high and beat. We're at a pretty high elevation and we climbed a lot today. So pretty crazy. The longest hike I've done all year. <laughs> Matched by yesterday's three miler. So we're just gonna grab a little grub, set up camp real quick. And we got about, I think when we get done, we'll have maybe two hours of hunting. So we'll go see if we can glass up some elk and try to make something happen tonight. Hopefully we'll get lucky. That'd be so cool. Well, we just sat down. Feels good. We've got an hour and a half till dark. And we're waiting to hear a bugle or see some elk. We came up to the top of the bench and we're kind of looking over everything now. It's a lot bigger country up here than you would imagine. We didn't see any elk. So we're tired. We hiked nine and a half miles to camp, 2,800 feet of elevation, and we're just exhausted. I'm thinking, what in the world? I was like, you know what? We're just gonna hunt them hard in the morning. Let's go recuperate, get back to camp. On the way back the night before, we saw grizzly tracks on the trail and we're thinking, oh man, we thought this bench would have fewer bears, but apparently there's big grizzlies in here. So we thought we're going to wake up in the morning, eat breakfast, take care of all the llamas, get our packs ready, and we're going to hike right at first light, which ended up being a, you know, a great way to do it. And we get over on top of the bench and we're kind of just going through these benches heading north and we see some elk coming up out of the bottom a couple cows and i'm like why are they why are they coming up out of the river breaks so hard and fast like what are they doing put on our packs and like you know let's just go up this ledge and we'll glass the whole bottom section down to the river break so we do that as soon as we do we hear a bugle and then we glass over Boom, there he is, the whopper, facing away from us. And his antlers going like this. They're like, holy smokes, that's a nice elk. And I'm so excited. I mean, I waited five to six years to draw this tag. Wasn't gonna be able to go hunting this year. Went through everything I did with my health. Found this bull across the river, four miles find that exact same bull close to where we saw him the morning before and I'm just like relieved. I'm like, oh, how cool is this? He's huge. We just gotta figure out what to do. I feel like there's three options on this elk right now. The one first option, probably the best one is just to be patient. The second one is to try to come down um, the bench without being seen and see if we can get a shot. 
close it with under 400. And then the third option is to go all the way around the cliffs and rocks down on the bottom side and see if we can get across the canyon and shoot into the pocket that they're hanging out, the herd's hanging out in. I tried number one, being patient for about 10 minutes. They didn't last very long. So number two is up. We're gonna sink down on the bench and just glass them and see if we can get any better visuals over there. So it's just luck. All of a sudden, at the corner of my eye, I see one of the llamas twitch his ear. And I'm like, what's he doing? I look back and he's looking and there's a bunch of elk coming up through the private. I'm like, I can't believe, first of all, there's private up here. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in the middle of nowhere. So I sit down, I get down, and I'm hiding behind the llamas. Tyler. Tyler, freaking elk. And I'm sitting there hiding behind them, and the elk had no idea I was there. They're jumping the fence on the public. Yes, this is the miracle we needed. And I see the big bull jump the private fence onto the public ground and then and I run up to Tyler it's like come on let's go let's go oh, there he is. There he is. and they'll start going up the small canyon I got my rifle we're going along on the clip and so the elk start coming up and over the saddle out in the broad open I'm like get out of here this is unreal no Thought and the bull comes. Get it in your mouth, get ready to blow. Here he comes, left, right side. He's in the opening. He is? Yep, he's looking right at us. Okay, you ready? Green light. Got him, hit. Smoke. He's down. Are you sure? Yeah, he just tumbled, he's down. I think we just shot a bull elk. I waited six years to get this tag. We might have an elk. I think we have an elk. Meat for the freezer. My wife is gonna be pumped. <laughs> Dude, we worked so hard to get up here, man. It's just been a crazy year, you know? And everything's been a fight. And I said, you know, if I if I give it all I have and get up here, I know I'm gonna need a little bit of luck for it to come together. And I feel like one of the luckiest guys in the world right now. We better go back and get our llamas and get up there. Hey bear! Come on, old grizzly bear, get out of here! There he is. He didn't go far, did he? <sighs> hey, bully. And walking down to him, you know, I'm thinking, this is, this is a magnificent animal. They had lived in the wild for that many years, you know, avoided and eluded hunters, grizzlies, tough winters, wolves. You know, other predators, I just can't believe it. That uh, an animal can grow that old, become that wise and smart and mature in such a crazy wild place. We're gonna get him taken care of and then uh, get back to camp. And I like to do it before, get back to camp well before dark so we can get this guy hung up in a tree and not to worry about grizzlies. And I had dreamt about this moment, you know, my whole life. Drawing a tag, going into Wyoming's backcountry, and trying to harvest a nice mature bull. And there I was living the dream after maybe I thought I might not be able to get a hunt ever again. And so to be there and to be living this was just a wonderful journey, something that 
I just can't explain. We got the bull all cut up, put on the llamas. Tyler's carrying some, I'm carrying some. Llamas are carrying some. We're a team effort here, llama power. And uh, we just got out of the out of the creek where the bull died, and we're up on the bench now, taking a reprieve. The wind started blowing. It's a beautiful day to start with, but four or, five, or six days ago, the weather forecast showed that we're gonna get a big storm blowing in, and it's blowing in. So it'd be nice to get to camp get this bowl hung up and uh, get settled in, take care of the llamas, and eat some food. So it's been a wonderful day. I just can't believe how blessed we are and how lucky we got today. It is awesome. I'm no llama, that's for sure. These guys are such heroes, it's amazing. Public land llama and all the troopers, they pack 90% of the, eh, 80% of the meat. This is gonna be our hanging tree. It's the tallest tree we have seen since we've been here. So it's about uh, 300 yards from camp, downwind. So we're gonna get the weight off the boys, leave it here, take llamas to camp, do chores, take care of the llamas, and then come back and hang this thing up. Look at that, buddy. Front quarter bone in. 44 pounds. Sitting here at camp early, thinking about heading home tomorrow. You know, you work so hard to just to be able to have the time to come on a hunt like this, and then it starts, and you just don't see the end in sight, and here it is. And it's kind of been a wild ride from the beginning to the end. I can't believe that it's almost over. I'm sure the llamas are excited to get home, and I'm excited to see my wife and my little boy and all the rest of the llamas. It's just kind of almost surreal, you know. You hope that it happens, and now that it did, I'm just ex so excited. I feel so blessed. So we're going to enjoy last night on the mountain, and we'll see you guys tomorrow bright and early on the trail. So last day of our hunt, we're just getting, uh, got the stove going. The wind blew like a son of a gun last night, and the tent was going pop, 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 all night long. We had a bear come into camp last night, um, about two hours in the dark. The llamas alarm called. They do this alarm call, woo, 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 woo. and they were spinning around their stakes that we put out there. And we got, we got all our headlamps and lantern and. Went out there and underwear, pistols, and flashlights looking for the bear. And uh, I watched the llama's eyes and the bear just scampered up the hillside there. We're going to have a good time packing out. It's been a wonderful adventure. Still more to come. All right, let's go catch our boys. Ready to saddle up. And I had dreamt of having this dream team of llamas my whole, you know, adult life as I've been raising llamas. And it took us up until this point to have a string of llamas of this size, ability, and, uh, and strength until, you know, until now. And we did, and to be able to take them all at once on a trip was pretty cool to see them all work. And uh, just one of the, the proudest moments of, you know, of my ranching life, I guess. The boys look great. We're all loaded heavy. Nine and a half miles, we'll see you guys at the truck. You know, at the end of the hunt here, I'm feeling grateful to be an American, to have the freedoms that we have, grateful to be able to hunt and enjoy public land and enjoying it the way I want to, you know, in the back country, in remote areas with my pack llamas. I just couldn't believe that I was able to go. And I never thought I'd be the guy that <clears throat> got sick and got cancer 
and I thought we were going to lose our, our, our ranch and our llamas and uh, not be able to do what we we're going to do anymore because I was so sick I couldn't do anything and everyone everyone showed up when it counted the most you know I'm a healthy man now <laughs> finished my first uh, hunt this year and uh, nights in the back country and many people don't ever get to do that and so how, how much more could I ask for Just grateful to be an American and have this wonderful place to enjoy and to find some solace in life when things get tough. It really kept me going through the out this year. So I'm just grateful to have a family and to be able to do this. You know, it's just a privilege. A lot of people don't have half the things that that we have in America, and so just to have the freedom and opportunity to do it, I'm so grateful.